What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today is going to be all about electronics. Now this one I'm really hoping it works out because I'm going to be attempting to data log the AEM X series through the serial port. But I'll also be attempting to convert the Audi VSS signal to be able to read on a GM PCM using this unit. In case you guys missed the last episode, I weighed the car. So check out the previous episode if you want to know how much this car actually weighs. Also, what's the weight distribution? I'm going to do this by priority. So the first priority is the wide band, so I'll be attempting to tackle that first. And then the VSS signal next. Guess it'll be like that. And then I'll be putting this one here. And then the HP tuner on one side also. So the only one I really need to focus on is figuring out how to connect this. So this is label 1 to 5, ground, and then 6 to 9. Looking at the AEM manual, it looks like I'll be using the blue wire and a black wire. The blue one will be going to pin number 2, black will be going to pin number 5. Now if you're like me and don't really work with this stuff, this thing actually has a number on here. So a pin out, this is 1, 5, and then this is 6 through 9. And essentially it goes like that, right? So number 5 will be this one right here, and number 5 on the male connector will be this one right here. So originally I had this for the analog signal, so all I did was basically unclip that, and then put this on the serial side. Now, it's unlikely that I'm going to use the analog signal again, but I'm just going to leave this on here just in case I do. And on the other end of that, I basically just took it off the HP tuner and put it on this one. Alright, at this point, it's just a matter of plugging this all in. Alright, so for now I'm going to leave it like this and try it out and see how everything is logging. Feature note, I'll probably order another one like this or either an extension or a longer unit altogether. Maybe a longer one so I don't have to mess with another connector. Typically I have the laptop on the seat so I need something that's a lot longer than this. Now I am considering buying like a laptop holder that you kind of bolt down right there and it just comes up right here. That'd be nice. Alright, so I went to my device manager here and I think I'm doing it right looks like it's reading it so good all right so I'm gonna go ahead and add a channel so I went to add a channel serial port find the brand so AEM and EQ ratio all right so there it is all right so gonna go ahead and divide this by 10 okay and that should give us the reading right there. Actually, did I do that right? Let me double check here. We are reading lambda. All right, let's try it. Alright, so that was actually a lot easier than I thought. Now, one of the reasons why I went to serial reading instead of just the analog signal, I didn't really like having to put on the formula. And then it was kind of difficult for me to match what the gauge was reading versus what was being logged. And when I look online, it seems like if I log in serial mode, oof, there's too much gas in there. Ow, I need to open up the garage door. Hold on. Ah. Oof. Uh, there was a little bit of delay for when the uh, exhaust fume got to the cabin of the car here. Now my eyes is all watery. Oof, forgot to turn. Ah, uh, forgot to open the garage door. Anyway, this should help out a lot when trying to dial in my VE table. So I'm gonna go ahead and attempt to make the EQ error again and see if it works this time. In case you guys are wondering what that clicking sound in the background is, that's the Noku, it's still connected. Anyway. Alright, so got the wideband working. Well, the wideband was working. The logging part working. So that's pretty awesome. Okay. Now the next one is trying to get the VSS working. I mean, I don't really need it to be accurate. I just need the ECU to see that the car is moving. Now for some of you guys that don't know, on this particular model Audi, I mean, I don't really know about the, the rest of the Audi. 
But on this particular model of the Audi, speed sensor on the transmission goes directly to the speedometer. So when you remove the ECU or the PCM, you still have a working speedometer. So what I'm trying to do is turn that original Audi signal into a signal that the GM PCM is actually able to see. Now if I understand this correctly, I believe the Audi uses a Hall Effect signal, which is a square wave versus what the GM uses, at least for this specific model, uh, uses a variable reluctance, which is a sine wave. So I found this unit, which is a 100BT. Now this is the next generation from the 50 something part number. Now the problem with this is with the 50 something part number, I keep saying 50 something, it's because I don't recall what it was called. Um, with that specific model, it was confirmed that it would work for converting the Hall effect to the VR signal. With this however, I'm not really too sure. In theory, all I really need to do is connect the input and the speed negative and do the same for the output and of course supply it with the ignition power and the ground and hopefully it shows a signal moving kind of slow here but if I can pick it up just a little bit at least I know it works all right so I'm gonna point this in the laptop and hopefully that moves and shows something okay You guys tell me, did it work? Alright, so the VSS shows zero. Uh, we're not picking it up in a signal, so I'm gonna go ahead and try to hook up the ground from the transmission side. I thought I didn't need it, but hopefully that's the only thing. Alright guys, so this took some time to get right and actually get some signal through the PCM, but I finally got it. First thing to note, on this unit, you could actually send a signal without the car moving. This is what it looks like on the PCM. So with that, I was able to test which exactly or which setting I actually needed because it comes with low, 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 high, high, low, and then high, high. And depending on which setting you're actually using, you have to actually match the output. As an example, if you're using high-low, you can't really use output 1 or output 2. And this is the same case if you're using low and high. Now I think at the beginning of the video, I said that the GM requires a square wave. Well, after a little bit more reading, it looks like it actually requires a sine wave input, but the output is going to be a square wave. At least that's what I find. Now, I wasn't also getting some signal. I was getting like one and zero miles per hour, which, you know, kind of means nothing. Uh, so what I ended up doing is I ended up jacking the car up and it's not that high, but I was able to do some test runs just to get an actual reading and confirm that it actually works. So that means I don't really need this to be super accurate, like I said before. Now, eventually, if I end up getting another speedometer, which would probably be an aftermarket, um, I will need a signal which I can then now use this unit. Realistically though, I probably will not be using that signal anyway because I'll probably end up getting a GPS type speedometer if I end up getting an aftermarket one. Now for the actual update. And it got there. Again, speed is off, but the VSS signal is there. So I'm still in the middle of trying to figure out whether or not I need the ground signal for the VSS. And then the Snoku finally died. I'm not sure how many tries I actually try to use it for, but I kept going. I'll tell you that much. Now while I'm waiting for this to charge, which technically could be a while, um gonna go ahead and try to see if I could install this one. But of course before I do that. I'm going to have to place this one first because this one is going to go on top of the steering column also. 
Alright guys, really digging where this setup's going. Check this out. That looks so sick. So this one I still have a night going through wherever I want, but I'm kind of thinking something like this. Check this out, 3000 RPM. Alright guys, so that is going to be it for today's episode. For the boost controller, I'll probably put it right here, but that's going to take me some time to do, just because I want it to the right angle and yeah, don't want to rush that. So that is it, I'm going to finish everything up, I'm going to wire everything up, so next time you guys see this thing, that will be mounted, everything else will be mounted.